behalf of the Commission on Magnet. Today, we received our sixth Magnet designation from the American Nurses Credentialing Center. It's my absolute honor and privilege to officially notify you that the Commission on Magnet has unanimously voted to credential the Miriam Hospital as a Magnet organization. I'm very excited and very proud to be one of very few hospitals in the country that have achieved six designations, and actually the world, as Magnet is international. This means we've achieved over two decades of nursing excellence at the Miriam Hospital. I want to share with you that there are seven exemplars that were <laughs> Today we also received seven exemplars. An exemplar is something that is awarded by the American Nursing Credentialing Center, and what it means is we actually exceeded the nursing excellence standards. It was very clear that you are doing wonderful things on behalf of not, not only uh, your organization, but for all of the patients and family that you serve.
behalf of the Commission on Magnet. Today, we received our sixth Magnet designation from the American Nurses Credentialing Center. It's my absolute honor and privilege to officially notify you that the Commission on Magnet has unanimously voted to credential the Miriam Hospital as a Magnet organization. I'm very excited and very proud to be one of very few hospitals in the country that have achieved six designations, and actually the world, as Magnet is international. This means we've achieved over two decades of nursing excellence at the Miriam Hospital. I want to share with you that there are seven exemplars that were <laughs> Today we also received seven exemplars. An exemplar is something that is awarded by the American Nursing Credentialing Center, and what it means is we actually exceeded the nursing excellence standards. It was very clear that you are doing wonderful things on behalf of not, not only uh, your organization, but for all of the patients and family that you serve. I'm Meredith Vieira, and I'm very pleased to be here with you to honor and celebrate the frontline heroes at the Miriam Hospital and the rest of our community. As many of you know, I was born and raised in Rhode Island, and although I live in New York now, I will always consider it my home. Little Rhodey may be the smallest state, but we have the biggest heart, and in times of need, we come together. That has never been more evident than over the past four months of this horrific pandemic. The Miriam was prepared. Entire units were re-engineered to handle COVID patients. The emergency department went silent and elective surgeries were canceled. There were many lives saved. Unfortunately, there were some lost. But every day, the medical staff came to work prepared to risk their lives to help others. So tonight we have reason to feel victorious, but we also know there are many challenges ahead of us that we still need to overcome. So over the next 30 minutes, I hope you join me that we connect and that we listen and we watch and we give with as much generosity as we possibly can. And now it is my pleasure to introduce your MC for the evening, WPRO talk radio host, Tara Granahan. Thank you, Meredith. And as a fellow journalist, it's truly an honor to be introduced by you. And thank you all for joining us on this beautiful summer evening. We hope you enjoy the next 30 minutes where we will share messages and images of hope, inspiration, and thanks. The Miriam Hospital, a small 247 bed hospital tucked away on the east side of Providence is truly a gem in our state. The culture of care and commitment to excellence displayed by the staff there shines like no other. And it's evidenced by their numerous awards for excellence in patient safety and satisfaction, their sixth, you heard, consecutive magnet designation for its nursing excellence, one of four hospitals in the entire country and world to achieve this, their award-winning national ranking as the top hospital in Rhode Island based on U.S. News & World Report, and clearly by that rainbow, I hope you've seen it, that beamed down from the sky and landed right here on Summit Avenue. Now, I said I can personally attest to the quality of care and compassion my family received when my dad was right a patient at the Miriam. And it wasn't just the doctors and the nurses, but everyone from the moment we entered that building. It felt warm, welcoming, and we knew that we were all in the capable, caring hands of the staff there who performed their duties with a quiet, calm, and strong, steady sense of purpose every single day, even when the world has been turned upside down during this pandemic. Which brings us to tonight, July 16th, 2020. The Miriam's annual gala and auction was canceled. So here we are bringing people together virtually to celebrate and support this wonderful hospital and the community who supports us. Over 400 of you, over 400 of you, registered to be part of tonight's event. So welcome to the biggest party that I have been to in quite some time. Please sit back, relax, grab your favorite celebratory beverage, a couple of snacks, and enjoy the show. And now I would like to introduce the president of the Miriam Hospital, Mr. Arthur J. Sampson. Arthur? Thank you, Tara, and thank you to all of you for joining me here tonight. 
as we salute our frontline and our community heroes. We've heard the word hero used so much these past four months, and tonight I want to begin by sharing my sincere appreciation for the heroic acts of kindness, determination, and compassion that I have witnessed right here at the Miriam Hospital. I am continually inspired by what occurs here every day, but the response and resiliency of our staff, of our community, and our volunteers during this pandemic has been unlike anything I have experienced in all of my years in healthcare. First, thank you to our frontline, the doctors, nurses, CNAs, phlebotomists, all of our clinical staff, but also our non-clinical employees in transport, environmental services, facilities, nutrition, patient registration, and security. All of you collectively and unselfishly come to the Miriam Hospital each day to do your part, never asking why, to ensure that those who needed care were cared for. I thank you. To our community who cared for all of those I just mentioned, coming to the hospital day after day with meals, posting signs and writing letters. You lifted us up from the outside when we needed it most. To our board of trustees, our governors, and our donor community, your steadfast support has sustained and propelled the Miriam to becoming the world-class hospital it is today. This includes all of our corporate and medical group partners who we rely on year after year who have committed to sponsoring our annual gala that had to be canceled and who agreed to redesignate that commitment to a full donation to the Miriam this year. I thank you. And finally, to all of you there out there tonight, old friends and new, watching from wherever you are because you care about the Miriam. On behalf of all of us and from the bottom of my heart, I say thank you. Now I'd like to turn the program back over to our MC, Tara Granahan, who has a few housekeeping items to share with you. Take it away, Tara. Thank you, Arthur. Clearly you lead by example and the response of support from our community is evidence of that. As Arthur stated, I would like to now address a few housekeeping items before we continue. If possible, we strongly recommend that you view the program on your laptop, computer, tablet, or smart TV. And please have your cell phone handy as there will be an opportunity to make a gift, easily make a gift during our moment of giving by texting, scanning, or calling a live member of our team. And we'll repeat that a little bit later on. Notice the chat feature as well. Please feel free to say hello. Let us know you're here. Where you are tuning in from, we wanna hear from you and share any shout outs to fellow guests or staff at the Miriam. And finally, please stay with us until the very end. We have such a special musical performance to share with you. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Timothy J. Babineau, President and CEO of Lifespan, with a message for all of you this evening, Dr. Babineau. Thank you, Tara, and thank you all for joining us tonight. We are in the midst of an incredibly difficult time, and I am so pleased that we are coming together to celebrate our frontline and community heroes at the Miriam Hospital. As you all know, the Miriam is a special place, providing a culture of care that you feel the moment you walk through its doors, and one that the staff embraces each and every day with resilience and purpose, even in the most challenging of circumstances. There's a reason why they say a picture is worth a thousand words. The images captured in the video you're about to see tell a story of everyday heart and heroism across lifespan hospitals that no words could express.
as Arthur mentioned earlier, the community support for our heroes has been overwhelming. Over 100 individuals and organizations were there to show support. They had signs, meals, even jewelry. Even in the toughest of times, you can see the smiles from behind the masks in the photos that we shared here tonight. Now, although the Miriam kept its doors open to care for the sickest of patients, other services came to a halt in the wake of COVID-19, and that resulted in millions of dollars lost. The video we are about to share explains the triumphs, including a COVID-19 survivor, and also the challenges that the hospital is faced with as we look ahead to brighter days. Well, this is an unprecedented challenge for all of us. And from mid-March through the end of May, uh, we lost tens of millions of dollars. And the volume is started to come back now. Uh, our surgical schedule is very robust and our inpatient census is back. But for that period of time where we lost tens of millions of dollars, we are really relying on the generosity of our donors to get us over this, this really difficult uh, time. Philanthropy will play a key role in sustaining the long-term viability of the Miriam Hospital, as it has for years. We canceled elective surgeries. We've canceled routine appointments. We canceled screening. So all of those folks that were doing all of that work were put in what we call a labor pool. And some could have been furloughed, some could have stayed home, but they really wanted to contribute and make a difference. Our staff is what's always made the Miriam Hospital a special place. Seeing their compassion, um, their resilience, their bravery was really inspiring. When we pulled up to the hospital, and indeed, as everyone knows, you, I could not go in as a family member. Transport came out to get him. This lovely gentleman with the kindest eyes, in spite of his shield and mask, opened the car door, saw David, helped him out and said, how are you, my friend? And it was just a moment that is forever etched in my memory. Thank you signs are posted around Merriam Hospital. Today, more than 10 restaurants from all around Rhode Island have rallied together to feed the hardworking staff. The outpouring of support from the community had an incredible impact. There were posters, there were thank you cards, there were flowers brought, there was food, which was very welcome. There were bracelets. Um, there was joy, there was uh, sentiments that will last a very long time in, in either people's minds, their hearts, or are on their wrists. From my perspective, when I got sick and I needed to go somewhere else, there was nowhere else that I would want to go. There is no other Miriam in the community, and therefore, if the Miriam weren't here, I would have been in a lot of trouble. We take care of patients like big city hospitals do, but we do it with our culture of care and warmth and just a personal touch that I don't think you get at other hospitals. Throughout the pandemic, as often as I could, Maria Ducharme and I would make rounds and we'd talk to the staff. They saw it as their mission. It's almost a calling for our employees. And I'd say to them, you're doing phenomenal work. And they'd, they'd brush it off and say, no, 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 this is, this is why I went into this, this field. I talk to environmental services people who have to go in and clean the room after we discharge a COVID patient. And they are as committed as anybody to make sure that that room is, is as sanitized as it possibly could be. Our security guards, our receptionists, our patient registration people, we all saw it as part of our, our mission. Somebody said to me, this is why I went into healthcare. And I really think that makes Miriam a very special place. I think what makes the Miriam Hospital so special has always been the people within the Miriam Hospital. They're dedicated, they're selfless, they're committed to the mission and the vision of the organization. And I think we've seen that in spades through this pandemic. We've seen people step up in ways that is just awe-inspiring. Thank you for that inside look at what makes Miriam the Miriam so special. After hearing those remarks, it's clear that now, more than ever, the Miriam needs our support. Here to make that happen, and I'm telling you, I've been wanting to say this for my whole life, live from New York, I'd like to welcome our superstar, 
fundraiser for the evening, Mr. Harry Santa Olala. Ooh, look at Harry. Great to see you. How are things going in New York? Hi, Tara. Yeah, good, thank you. Good. Morale is high over here. Uh, we are now, um, we are in a strong position of flattening the curve and uh, hopefully, touch wood, we're going to keep going in that direction. How are things over there? We are holding our own and we're looking forward to such a fantastic night and handing it over to you and do your thing, Harry. You are a star. Thank you very much. Hello, Rhode Island. How are you? How's morale? Goodness me, this is so weird. Um, it's great to be with you. Um, I'm Obviously, I'm gutted that we're not together in person, but fingers crossed, we will be together celebrating in one room um, as a party this time next year. But for now, we're gonna make, them, make the best of this situation and it is time for the appeal. This is the moment where you, everyone, every single one of you can help out and do your bit uh, to raise money for the Miriam. Um, those of you who have seen me in action before will probably be aware that I'm, you know, I'm usually running around like an absolute lunatic. Um, and sadly, I've got a little X on, uh, on the floor of my kitchen, which I'm not allowed to move from. So I'm going to do everything I can to bring this to life. It's going to be short, sharp, fun, engaging, and hopefully we're going to raise the money. But unlike traditional funder needs, where you wait for, you know, the number that you're comfortable donating at, don't wait a second, just get donating. <clears throat> get that money sort of flooding in. There's over 200 people who have tuned in, which means we're probably closer to 400 or 500 people actually watching. Okay, uh, so a little bit of housekeeping. There are three ways to donate tonight. You can use the text to donate, uh, which is where you will text TMH CARES, you will text that to 44321, that's right there. Um, or you, if you wanna call someone, have a quick chat, don't have a chat, you don't have time, uh, don't waste their time, just donate. You gotta call them on 401-444-4888. Or if you wanna just make it super quick, open up your phone, get the camera ready and scan this barcode. Um, I'm trying to get that right my big podgy finger right there, scan that code and that will take you straight to the donate page. There's three ways to donate and there is absolutely no reason why you haven't already got that ball rolling. Why are you watching me? Pick up your phone, start donating. The funds raised this evening will support the greatest needs of the Miriam Hospital. As you heard earlier, um, COVID-19 has absolutely devastated financial um, you know, the, the, the financial uh, backing of the Miriam at the moment, tens of millions of dollars we heard on that video. Um, and like many businesses, the hospital revenue is the key component to, to sustaining the patient care and staff resources. So it's, it really is vital we get this right. Um, and the incredible news uh, is that we are starting tonight's <laughs> fund and need with a $25,000 donation um, but here's the crazy part. That has come from the Miriam Hospital Medical Staff Association, which is bonkers when you think about it. They are the people who have been on the front line for the last three months. And here they are stepping up to the plate. Look at that. It's an American baseball term. Uh, stepping up to the, to the plate and just smashing out the part. 25 grand coming from the Hospital Medical Staff Association. Um, which is a bit like a neighbor of yours walking past your house and it's just up in flames, them running in, putting out the fire and then offering to pay your mortgage afterwards. It's amazing. And that is the perfect way to start the, uh, the campaign because the reality is you can't hear that and then not give something. And I don't want you to give us couples or as a family, or as a sitting room, if you're all sat around looking at each other, say, hey, have you done it? Have you, have you done it? Everyone is giving, okay? Everyone. So think what the Miriam Hospital staff have done for the last three months. Think about that donation they've started us off with, and think about what you are going to do to make sure that we are making this a success. And I've got a live feed here from Kim, 
um, letting me know how many donations are coming in. We have a $10,000 donation, uh, which is a gift from the Seagull family, the Seagull family, who are long-term supporters of the Miriam, um, including Susan and David Bazaar, who was actually featured in the video. He is a COVID survivor. Jamie and Brock Manfield, Manville, sorry, um, Shelley and uh, Andy Seagull and Steven Seagull, um, who is not to be mistaken for Steven Seagal, uh, who is of course the American actor, screenwriter and mixed martial artist who uh, produced classics such as Under Siege, uh, Above the Law and Hard to Kill. Uh, off the top of my head. Uh, so no, not Steven Seagal, but uh, Steven Seagal. Um, incredible effort from the Seagal family at $10,000. So where else is the money going? Um, I'm told that we're at $32,000 already, which is great. The money's coming in. Um, one of the areas that this money is going towards is we are helping to purchase light bot pulsed ultraviolet disinfecting systems which do not roll off the tongue. <laughs> However, they do clean and sterilize patient rooms. So absolutely vital right now. Lifebots have proved essential tools in reducing the incidence of hospital acquired infections using ultraviolet technology um, as a final step to ensure that all pathogens are killed and services following the use of uh, cleaning protocols. So it's the best way to keep anyone who enters the Miriam safe. And right now we need it more than ever. Um, let's see how we're doing in terms of numbers. We've, we, we are now well over $50,000, which is fantastic. We've got a gift at $5,000 $5, from Susan Gilstein, um, who is of course another uh, great uh, friend of the Miriam and board trustee. I know Suzanne uh, is actually also tuning in tonight with her daughter, Debbie. Um, who is also a board officer, as I'm sure you're all aware. Uh, one of my favorite people, actually, this side of the pond is Debbie, and back-to-back -back winner um, of the widest, most shining smile in Rhode Island. Uh, Debbie, shout out to you and the whole family who are apparently watching uh, from the beach in Middletown, Rhode Island, um, Sounds lovely, um, and I'm not, you know, this isn't me angling, you know, to come and stay uh, at a beautiful beach in Rhode Island. Now's not the time to be thinking about that or discussing that. Um, I'm sure it'd be lovely, but no, now is not the time. Uh, I'm very hopeful that you are all having a good time. It's incredible that you donated $5,000, and I believe we got another $5,000 from another board trustee, uh, Marie Langlois and her husband, John Lorkey. Uh, Marie and John are watching tonight from their family home um, in Westport, uh, Massachusetts, I believe. Um, I may have got that wrong, but that's what I'm being told. Um, and we are trying to enhance the Miriam's personal protective equipment. That's kind of like the second key area that we're aiming to improve. So we're trying to improve the PPE at the Miriam during this time and um, supplies with the addition of 12 air purifying respirators. That's what we're trying to get, 12 air purifying respirators um, and they are appropriate for situations of high risk from aerosol transmission, which obviously, obviously it's important right now with air purifying respirators are essentially helmeted full face masks that can provide um, many times of protection of an N95 without the experience of uncomfortable sort of pressure and all of that sort of stuff. Um, it also allows patients to actually see the whole of a doctor's face, um, which right now is a rarity, I imagine. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, do, do we know where we're at in terms of numbers? How am I doing? It's very weird doing this to nobody. I mean, I'm used to have, right, we're at $61,000, which is certainly not to be sniffed at, but we want a lot more. So if you haven't donated yet, there are three ways. They're down there. You can either text TMH Cares to 44321. You can call 401-444-4888. Or you can scan that barcode um, and it'll take you straight to the donate page. Right. 
Keep it coming in, please. I promise you it is going to be worth it. You know, donate as if your life depends on it. You know, who knows? It may very well do one day. This is your community and the donations are coming in thick and fast. We've got Jane and Don Stanford tuning in from their home. Um, they've actually organized a virtual watch group, which is awesome. I hope you're all clinging your glasses right now and cheersing uh, Jane and Don. So thank you so, so much. Um, and all the friends from Adoption Rhode Island. Uh, so thank you for your support. And Susan and Sol Kaplan. Uh, Susan is uh, the board chair. She's watching with their family and their home in Pre uh, Providence one of my favorite places. And shout out to all of Susan's fellow trustees from the Joe and Druzy Foundation. Um, who else? We've got one from the board members. Um, in fact, I'm just gonna give a shout out to the board members past and present. You know, you're all absolute rock stars. I've got to know many of you uh, over the last couple of years and I'm just gutted we can't all be together. Uh, but to gala chairs, Grace Dugan and Greg Pizzuti. I'm sorry if I've butchered your name. It happens to me the whole time, so I empathize. Um, where are we at? All right, I've got Felicia. Um, I've got Alan and Tim O'Neill, Sherry, Carly Blossom. What a fabulous name. Um, Jennifer Gerard, Bernie Lambrizi. Lambrice, again, I'm sorry if I'm getting these names wrong. I'm trying to do my best. Um, Anne Courier Fury, uh, Jerry Manning. These are all coming in. We've had 32 at 61,000. That was a little bit, I'm a little bit behind the, the, the eight ball there because we've already announced that part. Um, the third sort of key area that we're looking to donate to, and we only have three minutes left. So please, 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 if you haven't already done it, donate. If you've already done it once, donate again. Just make it count. I promise you, this is the most important part of the event. We've got to get this right. Um, the final area that we're sort of trying to donate towards is to support the mental, physical, and spiritual health of all of the employees during this difficult time. So Lifespan have highlighted and expanded existing well-being resources while offering new resources designed to support the individual as well as their family and community. So help Miriam staff, like help them decompress, help reinvest in them, um, give them that respite and that, that they need. The mindfulness rooms are gonna be absolutely key in the, uh, in the coming months. Um, they must be exhausted, to be honest. Um, you know, we, we've all been, you know, cooped up at home, working from home, complaining about it. Well, you know what? Cry me a river. Think about the staff at the Miriam Hospital and all these other hospitals that have just been absolute rock stars on the front line. Um, at $1,000, uh, why not advance the Victor J. Baxt Family Resilience and Wellness Program? It's a well-loved program that seeks to build the inner strength of medical staff. I've got 90 seconds left. I got a few more names, Tara uh, Demian, Daniel Rampone, thank you, Nancy uh, and Porter, Maggie Dupont, um, Caroline Aparo, Gary, David, Jeffrey Breer, Angela, um, Judith uh, Labossier, is that French? Have I no, I've messed that up, haven't I? Gail Dalton, Tara Demian, and Marlene uh, Katita. My apologies, Marlene. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful that you guys are listening, paying attention, getting these donations in. We've also got $1,000 from Dr. Howard Safran and his wife, Nancy. They are the gala, chair, um, the gala chairs for next year's event, which will, of course, be roaring into the 20s part two. And we will all be together. We will be hugging and high-fiving. I am hopeful that will be the case. Um, but please... The donation option will be live for the rest of the night. Where are we at on the totalizer? My time is up, but I'd like to see where we're at so far. We're at $67,500, which is not bad for nine minutes. Um, I'll part with this. I mean, why don't you make a donation for a dollar for every single time you've heard the word unprecedented or pivot in the last three months? Try and make a mental calculation and, and just donate again, whatever you think that number is. I would love for this to hit $100,000 by the end of the night. We're pretty close. We're sort of two thirds of the way there. And I think 
I've nearly outstayed my I've outstayed my welcome, haven't I? Right, Tara, are you are you back in the room? Are you with me? Where are you? I couldn't take my eyes or ears off of you, Harry. You are incredible. I was saying, holy Steven Seagal. That was pretty amazing. Was that only 10 minutes? Amazing, Harry. We're all in awe of you just watching you uh, tirelessly do that, and we're all going to be exhausted by the end of the night. But yes, people can still donate. Uh, Harry's got you going. I am so inspired by the generosity in just these matter of minutes. Our little roadie community, boy, we can really put Thank together. Thank you so, so much. Thank and enjoy you. Enjoy the rest of the evening. I appreciate it. I Stay safe, everyone, and I hope to see you all next year. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. What a job. I could see the gifts coming in, hear the phones ringing. Let's keep it going. The giving links and the phone lines will remain open, so gifts can be made anytime after the conclusion of tonight's program. Also, don't go anywhere, because you don't want to miss our surprise performance. It is so worth hanging on just a couple of more minutes. The totals are coming in. That phone line will stay open. You can uh, scan still, find it online, and you can always text TMH Cares. That's going to stay around. We're going to bring in the totals. Uh, happy to announce. Here's our Holly. We went to high school together. Hey, we're socially distancing. <laughs> All right, here's our total for tonight's appeal. And this is quick, and you, you can still please donate. If you haven't heard anything about the Miriam, it's all on you, and it's all about you might need them. <laughs> you might need them. All right, $71,855. That's tonight, just that's the total for tonight's appeal. And the total for our entire event, $356,355. That is amazing. And wow, what a staff here the staff at the Miriam. We can't thank you all for your contribution of time and your generosity tonight. Of course, your financial support means so much for the Miriam. We're not done yet. I'd like to introduce Kickback Relax. He's a good friend of mine. He is incredibly talented, fellow Rhode Islander, Billy Gilman, who has a special message and a great performance for you to enjoy to close out tonight's program. Thank you for having me. True pleasure to be here with you tonight. And now, Billy Gilman. Hey, all of you Miriam frontline workers, this is Billy Gilman and the community. I don't know who exactly is going to be watching this, but uh, I'm so honored that I was asked uh, to sing this next song um, kind of as a thank you. I, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good with words, but I'm even better with music. And I try to find messages that help inspire. And what better time in our world than to find inspiring songs. And... I just wanted to simply say thank you so much for combating on such an aggressive level uh, with this horrific pandemic, uh, the coronavirus. I can't imagine your pain. I can't imagine your, your, your scared level, uh, your nervousness to bring it home to your families, being locked in another room so your child or your grandmother or your mother or your aunt or whomever you may live with that may be vulnerable might get it. The thought process that goes through your brain, I hopefully will never know. I know I will never know. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for protecting Rhode Island and all of, all of society because it spreads very fast. So on behalf of me, our community, we thank you, we love you, and I thought this song, which is one of my songs, was fitting for the moment. Be safe, be strong, and you are our heroes, that's for sure. This is for you. There's a flower in the smallest garden reaching for the light, and there's a That's right. 
There's a fire inside of everybody that's burning clear, clear and bright. And there's a power in the faintest heartbeat that cannot be Cause you can ride the wind You're gonna take your dreams Where they've never been There's a hero In everybody's heart oh, oh, oh. So go on and trust yourself Cause you can ride the wind You're gonna take your dreams Where they have never been There's a hero In everybody's heart oh. You're all here